go live uh, there and uh, yeah it looks like we're live looks like we're live awesome let me jump into OBS that's uh, the software I use to do this and I've got a uh, chat window to look at that's helpful um, and now I'm actually gonna uh, start sharing this to social media but in this show I'm going to uh, review the things that I've read this past week. So hopefully that's uh, that's interesting to people. Uh, just a chance for us to sort of connect, you know? Here, I'm going to zip up my hoodie because I feel like showing off G.I. Joe today. I'm feeling nostalgic. Hello to Araceli Chavez. Nice to have you here. Hello, Peter Ang, a human, LPJ22, Najiad, Star Squid Demon Eyes. All sorts of folks. This is great. This is great. Glad to have you all here. Um, like I say, I'm basically just taking a moment or two here at the beginning to share this to some social media. But um, feel free to ask some questions and stuff. Um, tons of people here. I can't say everybody's name. Let's say uh, I'll try. Hello, Star Squid Demonized, Nick, Mr. Freeze, Gustavo, Mandela Butterfly, Sarah Ferris, H. Smith. Uh, ep, 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 ep. <laughs> Skits Animations, Louis Q, Fia Lecter, De La Biblia, Disco Spider. Did I get this sweater from Walmart? You know, I think I may have, actually. I think that is where I got this. Yeah, yeah. It was a while back now, but yeah, I think that this was on sale at Walmart. I'm, I, I grew up with G.I. Joe, so I really like it. Um, so I've got a stack of comics here that I read this week. And, uh, oh, thank you so much for the super chat that comes from, it says, don't read this message. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I won't. Uh, <laughs> I'm still doing a little social media this thing here, and I'll be right with everybody. Um, let's see. Anybody watching Harley Quinn? You know, I've seen some YouTube stuff, and it looks really fun. Um, but I don't have, is that on that's on DC Universe, the streaming, so I don't have that. Um, I would be very curious to see it, though. Um, what else? Do you ever plan on reviewing Master of Kung Fu? I would like to. I, I really like that um, Mensch uh, Gulasi era. Um, so I think that that would be something interesting to talk about. I basically was sort of thinking of holding that till closer to like when the movie came out, maybe a little before, but yeah. Caught me not realizing you were doing a live stream. I am. Uh, hello, Lord. I had the same sweater and wore that every day for a year or two. I recognized it instantly. <laughs> Trying streams on the main channel. Yeah, um, so I've started doing things like, um, if I drew, do like live drawing, I do that on a second channel that I've got called Pros and Cons. And, uh, but this I wanted to do is sort of uh, testing it out as a weekly show where I just review the comics that I've read this week. And uh, so, yeah, I'm doing that on the main channel and, and we'll see how it goes. See, see what kind of engagement it has and whether people are actually interested in hearing my mini reviews of comics and stuff. But that's the idea here. Let's see. Um, oh, there, there is another thing that I read this week that I didn't grab, but that's okay. That's okay. Now I'll just show it next week. Uh, what's the deal with Free Comic Book Day this year? As far as I know, there is no uh, Free Comic Book Day going on this year. That's too bad. That's that's definitely too bad. Um, I was thinking about that last night. I was um, oh, I was just thinking like, man, this is a really fun time of the year usually. Uh, for comics fans, free comic book day, and usually your local comic shop does something special for that. Like the ones I have here, you know, they might get cosplayers, um, have some extra deals, maybe some food, um, all sorts of like, you know, giveaways and prizes. It's always been an awesome day. And you know that like that's the weekend where usually a big Marvel movie comes out. So uh, it's really frustrating to not get that this year. Um I'm aiming to sort of like have this show start like right at the top of the hour. So we're, we're just about there. We'll call this like five minutes or so preamble. 
but thank you all for for jumping in and being here it's really really cool um yeah so i share, shared some um links to some of my social media and stuff i just uh wanted to do that let's see um before i sort of start at like the top of the hour i'll just uh take a look at the live stream here um you got me catching you doing a live stream yes yes just discovered my channel that's wonderful wonderful uh let's see uh, free cookies any comic that explores cosmic horror that you recommend well definitely um uh, uh hellboy i mean his first uh battle is against um a cosmic horror so it's so definitely that uh super chat from wondrous history of classic film thank you so much that's so generous thank you very much please keep doing this well i'm just trying to sort of create a little bit of extra content um i don't necessarily have a lot of time to prepare something else uh i've found but i can do a live stream and as long as i'm sort of doing some content that way i thought it might be helpful what's your favorite vertigo comic oh what a great question um probably overall honestly why the last man um i think that that was vertigo anyway um and uh you know someday i'll, I'll talk about sandman too uh there's a lot of great stuff though in vertigo vertigo is a great great line uh, let's see, Mr. Freeze, thank you so much for the super chat, and, uh, and says, Chris Claremont was supposed to be at my free comic book day. Oh, uh, that would have been amazing. That would have been great. Uh, did we all give this video a thumbs up? Well, that's always nice. Um, why don't you produce a comic tropes about Scott Snyder? Um, I uh, almost did that this week, but um, I, I probably will at some point. I am not doing it this week, but I probably will talk about Scott Snyder sometime soon. Um... You know, I haven't read a lot of Brian Wood, so I don't have strong opinions on him, LPJ. I'd have to basically read his his stuff with a more critical eye. You know, sometimes you've read something, but you, you were just reading it for enjoyment, and you, it didn't stay in your head. Um, will I ever do a video on Spider-Man Life Story? I'm very tempted to. Um, I really like that. That was, a, that was a pleasant surprise how much I liked that series. Anyway, let's talk about what I read this week. Uh, and it, it's not a lot, but of course there's not anything new coming up. This is all new to me, but it isn't, and, and some of it's new-ish, but it isn't stuff that came out this week. I'll interrupt uh, whenever there's a super chat. Let's see. Uh, Rubber Kidney, that's a funny name. Uh, love the Platinum Age stuff. The history of comics is so interesting. Thank you for your attention to detail. Thank you for watching. What are your thoughts on crowdfunded comics, and do you have any projects you are looking at? You know, I, I have to admit that I'm not super plugged into um, crowdfunding comics as in general. I mean, I think that it's great that people can take control of stuff in their own hands. Um, there is a YouTube show about it. I was a guest on it once, so that's how I know about it. And it's called Crowdfunding Comics. And they interview people uh, that have projects that they plan to um, crowdfund uh, with various platforms. So uh, that, that channel is a little more plugged into that than I am. Anyway, the first thing I read this week was Basket Full of Heads. And um, I picked up the first five issues. Uh, without reading any of them and that was based purely on how much I've enjoyed Joe Hill's work in the past I'm a big fan of lock and key I made an episode about that and talk about what I think he did right uh, as a writer uh, and that also benefited uh, from some gorgeous work by what was it Gabriel Rodriguez oh thank you so much uh, Polly D for the, for the uh, European super chat that's exciting that's exciting to connect with people from a distance. Anyway, so I picked up five issues of it without reading any of them. I just knew that I'd like it, and I binged this stuff. You know how you can binge Netflix? I binged this, and it was so frustrating when I got to issue five, and it isn't and it isn't over. There's one more issue, and I don't believe it's been published yet. It, it, it's being held up because of everything that's going on. I really enjoyed this. Um, I it, It's um, set in... 1983 i'm a little older than some people out there i was a kid then and i remember the 80s it takes place in maine i grew up in massachusetts i can heavily relate to what they're talking about basically this all takes place on an island off the coast of maine and um if you've ever seen jaws what a fantastic movie by the way but things about jaws and this comic relate so much to today Basically, the um, the summer's coming to an end, 
and some uh, criminals that were on like um, the prisoners, I should say, because because they were in jail, were on a work detail and four of them escaped. OK, so there was a work detail. Look at this uh, tie in Joe has to his father, Stephen King's work, Shawshank Prison. That's a clever little Easter egg, isn't it? Because Shawshank would be the nearest fictional, but like nearest prison. Anyway, so these prisoners escape right at the end of summer. And this um, really young uh, rec police recruit is sort of just tasked with uh, uh, keeping his nose out of it and, and hanging out at the uh, sheriff's uh, house with his girlfriend, this kid's girlfriend, and the family and everything. Things go very, very bad. Um, this mayor, th this is how it ties into like Jaws and stuff like that. This this mayor is, is really nervous about these escaped criminals because all he wants is the island to have a good reputation. And thank you very much for that super chat, Najiad. Um, I mean, the idea of like, oh, you know, there's there's danger out there. But the important thing to us is just to keep everything open for business. Well, damn, that's definitely something we ha are, are seeing and hearing. Some people like weighing how important is it to have business open versus how important is it to protect the public's uh, safety and well-being. Um, if you've never seen Jaws for any reason, that's the whole conflict really is not the fact that there's a shark, but the fact that a beach town wants to keep themselves open well in this you know like they, they've got a little bit of that with like this um mayor wanting to keep the town open anyway uh at, at night uh some somebody breaks into a house and kidnaps the police officer and uh it's up to his young girlfriend to sort of defend herself and and it goes somewhere from there there's a big twist as to who these prisoners are and it follows her but the important thing is she takes an axe from this house okay because this uh police officer the the sheriff seems to be quite wealthy actually and he has a lot of exotic old um things including this norse axe and just to give you a little bit of the premise she uses it on someone and he stays alive so this all takes place in one evening with this girl trying to stay alive and figure out the mystery and save her boyfriend, the young police officer, who has actually been kidnapped by the um, criminals. That's a lot of synopsis. Why did I like it? It moves at a very brisk pace. Um, the illustrations are really... Um, uh, uh, grounded but like great gesture and stuff so I felt like I knew these characters and I could relate like the, these poses and stuff are great the, the the time period and stuff don't really matter I think it's mostly set in the past just so that we didn't have uh, to write a couple pages about like well, why didn't you use a cell phone let's just like take that out of the equation essentially but otherwise it's kind of timeless um, there's definitely lots of mystery They're like like why did a certain girl die? Where is some missing money? Uh, who are these criminals? Um, this would make a good movie. This would make a really good movie. Uh, someone just said that in the um, uh, chat. So it moves at a brisk pace. The There's mystery so that you're constantly like wanting to find out more answers. And I'm trying to mostly just flip through the first issue instead of the others so that I'm not like accidentally spoiling the story for you. Some great color too. Like, look at this. Like the 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 warm hues that are used here to indicate like the setting sun at the end of summer. Uh, brilliant. Um, and then like all cool colors once the sun has set. Uh, masterful. Great, great coloring. Dave Stewart. No surprise. Dave Stewart's one of the best in the business. I don't know that this would necessarily need to be a TV series unless it was a limited uh, series. The supernatural aspect is not necessarily like the most exciting uh, part of it. It's it's the whole story. Um, it's fun that it has a supernatural aspect that like if somebody has their head cut off, they don't die. There's a mystical like curse maybe or something. Um, but that's not the driving force. The driving force is like this girl trying to stay alive. Um, and she's always on the back foot. She's always in danger. Um 
I loved it. I really strongly recommend it. I Like I say, I binged this. I read all five of these in one sitting. It was a great experience. I like horror. Maybe you don't like horror. Um, you know, it has some violence, but it's not like... It's not like people being chopped in half. It's like a head is... There's decapitation, obviously. You can kind of guess that with the title. But you're not going to, like, um, have, like, graphic entrails and stuff being pulled out. So, anyway. Um, uh, there's some... There's my first recommendation. I do recommend this. It was such a pleasant surprise. Not a pleasant surprise. It was... It was nice to be... Uh, to have it confirmed that I liked it. Somebody wants Arthur Adams. I would definitely love to talk about Arthur Adams sometime. Uh, moving on, um, I've talked about uh, reading this comic before, Immortal Hulk. Um, th they made great use in this uh, these two issues, 32 and 33, of um, sort of a character who's been a joke in the past, this alien called Zemnu. He was really used... Um, as a joke back in uh, She-Hulk when John Byrne was writing it as sort of a fourth wall breaking parody comic. But in this, Zemnu is actually scary because he's quite unknowable. Zemnu is a, a big strong alien, cool, but he's also, he's, he's really powerful at hypnotizing people. And um, the Minotaur is a guy named Dario Auger and he runs uh, Roxxon Chemical. Uh, if you've ever seen like, um, or read much Marvel, you know that like one of their evil companies is Roxxon Oil. And it's now run by a guy who can turn into a Minotaur. He can also look human if he needs to. And he hires Zemnu to hypnotize the world to convince them that uh, Hulk is, you know, evil and Zemnu is good. Um, and what's scary is like, this book is all about body horror, okay? Because the premise is that the Hulk or Bruce Banner can die they'll always get resurrected. Horrible mutilations happen and stuff. In this, Zemnu does something that we've never seen him do before. He's always had these, like, mechanical components embedded in, under his fur. And in this, he just sort of bends over and uh, all these, like, contraptions come out and he's got this, like, whirring, like, blade and he just, like, he feeds, literally, he feeds on people. And uh, so that's pretty grody stuff. Uh but if you like horror, this is like horror that like also does not get overly gory. The horror is is like, you know, that this is a version of the Hulk that's very, very dangerous. He does have a conscience, but he's, uh, he wants to, he's an anarchist. He wants to destroy the world. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Who wrote the Comic Tropes theme song? Uh, just a friend that I hired. Uh, nothing special there. It hasn't done anything else that you would know. Um, yeah, he looks like the Abominable Snowman, but they do something new with him in this. Um, I've talked about it before. Uh, Immortal Hulk's good. By the way, Dario Agar, I strongly suspect that he could end up being the villain in, or one of the villains anyway, in the next Thor movie. Because he has been a Thor uh, villain in the past. And they hired Christian Bale. And I'm really not sure who Christian Bale would play other than potentially Dario Agar. Relatively new creation. He's good. He's, he's capitalism to like the nth degree. Like he is completely reprehensible, you know. Uh, he's really, really bad. Yeah, the, some of this is like... A, like, it implies gore more than it shows is all. Um, but sometimes they, they go a little, um, yeah, I mean, like, see how, like, they'll have, like, these weird, like, monster body parts? And they've had issues where, like, the Hulk was dismembered, and he still, like, survived, but he was completely dismembered. Or they've had an issue where Bruce Banner turned into the Hulk and literally absorbed somebody into his body as he was transforming. So, um, this, this book moves at a great pace. I think the artwork by Joe Bennett best of his career i remember back in the 90s he was doing some uh spider-man stuff i thought it was like average at best it did not interest me he's evolved it's always exciting to see an artist get better some artists kind of like in comics will kind of stay the same you know um and then some will level up uh, i'm thinking um specifically of somebody um um how do i pronounce his name um oh he started as a jim lee clone and then he started working on stuff for like humanoids in france 
Who, wh what's what's the name of the guy I'm thinking of? He just utterly changed his his style. It, it, it is brilliant. He did also some Wildcats stuff um, in the middle there. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. All of a sudden, I can't think of. I'm gonna Google it real quick to see if I can think of who I'm talking about because it's a, it's an example worth um, looking up if I can think of it. Um, um, yeah, people are talking about Ryan Stegman, and I agree. Like, yeah, he's um, he's Travis Charette. Thank you, Clarence Brown. Got it just before I um, I knew it started with a T, but I, I didn't want to guess. Travis Charette, look at his first stuff. Uh, it's like a bad Jim Lee clone. It is not that great. It's it's of its time, and he leveled up in such an amazing way. Just an amazing way. Well, like Joe Bennett has really improved since the nineties. Um, it's it's his best work, and it's really it's really engaging. It's really it it's pretty unique. Um, is there like a good uh, splash page? Maybe. Well, that one. You know. Let me tilt that and um yeah he's just doing some really interesting stuff and he uses hatching uh, a lot like on these clouds um on this shirt and stuff like that it gives everything this flowing quality um and it reminds me a little of like paintings or something am i saying that he's my favorite artist no but he has leveled up, and so it's really exciting to see some people at the top of their game. And I think that Ali Ewing and Joe Bennett are at the top of their gang here, game here. By the way, look at this like nice little Easter egg. He's just uh, this is like a you know news camera getting opinions on the Hulk, and they're all like, "Oh yeah, the Hulk's bad." And I was like, "Why do these guys look so familiar?" And then it, I realized that this is uh, Bart Milhouse, and uh, who's the bully that goes, "Ha ha," Nelson. Nelson. So that's kind of a funny little Easter egg. Uh, thank you for the super chat. I hate that horror anthology comics have sort of disappeared. Um, yeah, you know, in general, um, anthologies seem to be a tougher sell here in America. Uh, anthologies don't do nearly as well in general. They're, they're really... It's always been a tough sell, but personally, I love the anthology because you get like a lot of variety and usually you'll discover one or two cool things. Um, by the way, I'll just like take a quick break to go like my pandemic hair and stuff is getting out of control. Like I, first of all, am having trouble finding the plug for my electric razor. So I haven't shaved lately. I'll find it. But like I, I don't have it right now. So I'm getting like pretty scruffy and like this is getting long. It's so hard to like tame my hair. I, I'm sure you guys are all having similar challenges. Um, X-Men. X-Men is interesting. Um, I really, really enjoyed Hickman's years at Marvel before he left and then has come back when he did um, he did Fantastic Four and then he used a lot of those same concepts going into two concurrent Avengers titles that he, he uh, ran for, for several years that all build up to Secret Wars. And I loved it. I was there for it, man. Um, he's great at world building. He's great at really big cosmic uh, stuff. With X Men, Powers of X and House or House of X, Powers of Ten, that miniseries, I adored. I loved it. The new ongoing X Men title is the only title in the mutants that I'm reading because I like Hickman and I've also liked. Uh, normally, the artist is uh, Lionel Francis Yu. For this issue eight, it was Mahmoud Asrar. Um, it's finally starting to address an issue that I have with it in that, like, I love the world building. I love that right now mutants are completely united and forming their own society. And we've got all these glimpses of the future where no matter what they tried to do, whether it was Charles Xavier's dream, Magneto's, Apocalypse, no matter what, mutant kind eventually does not become the dominant life form. Even though they're an evolution, supposedly, of humans... Humanity um, uses like post-human technology to remain dominant and, and mutants are eventually like wiped out no matter what the future is. So like all of mutant kind knows this and is united right now. Cool premise. And uh, when, they, when that was given to us in House of X Powers of Ten, 
worked fantastic. That thing was very fast paced, gave us so many new ideas for the, the X-Men world. But in the ongoing book, they're still doing all this world building. And I'm like, cool world building. Not a lot of conflict. It's not driving things forward. They need an enemy. You know what I mean? And if you're not, you don't have Magneto and Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister, if the <laughs> Mystique, if they're all united, uh, you know, are they fa facing Sentinels or something? Well, not yet. And it was getting a little frustrating for me. So, um, this was a nice change of pace that still thematically fit. What enemy do they face? The Brood. If you don't know the Brood, um, they are aliens that look very similar to the xenomorphs from the popular movie Alien, Aliens, etc. I'm pretty sure that Chris Claremont was heavily inspired by, if not ripping them off. Um, they operate in a hive mentality. They have a Brood Queen. But it's a great threat, um, and what they do is they introduce uh, that there is a king, potentially, a king egg, specifically, and a queen would want to always make sure that there is no king egg, because that would usurp her authority. And the king egg is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. Just like in um, ant hives or beehives, there isn't a, a king, there's a queen, that's their normal sort of... Uh, biological process but what happens in this is human some humans invented a king egg they took years and years to develop a king egg to control the brood potentially anyway uh unknowingly the new mutants okay reconnected sorry about that everybody um we had a, um, I had a, a, a hiccup with the signal strength, but it looks like I am back. Uh, it looks like the signal strength is strong. Thanks for your patience. Um, so anyway, finally, they've got at least an, an enemy. It does connect with um, the ideas of post-human technology, potentially uh, usurping the natural genetic evolutionary path because they, um, they introduce this king egg. So hopefully um, they continue to have some stuff with like the brood or get back to focusing on some human enemies because all this world building is great, but I, I need a little more conflict. So these issues, um, gorgeous art, especially this Mahmoud Asrar. Oh my God, like where did he come from? But I loved, I loved it. Um, I love his work. Um, so yeah, um, I like the art. No complaints there really. Um, and uh, I just uh, wish that the story would sort of pick up um, with some conflict and, and maybe like back burner some of the world building for a little while. Uh, that would be my, my hope, that, a way to make this better. It also, de like, you can read X-Men without having to read the other titles, but it does refer to some of like what's going on in the other uh, titles. I don't care. I don't want to read all, all the titles. So, you know, hopefully they don't like connect too strongly. What was the name of the Fantastic Four issue that led to Secret Wars again? It wasn't like one issue. It was, you had to take Hickman's entire run, and then he took some of the cosmic ideas that he'd built into that. He continued that through the two simultaneous Avengers books. Like, there were two, like, so two Avengers books every month, and it all was building to world, towards entire multiverses ending. So anyway. Um... So that's that. Um, not too much more to, to review this week, but um, one thing I looked at is this. Cool Guys Upright, Cool Color Bros Freedom Anthology for Ladies. Okay, so what is this? Uh, if I flip it over to this side, maybe this makes a little more sense because you see this is in Japanese. Um, when I was in Japan last, uh, which wasn't that long ago, it was less than a year, but... Um, I went to Mandarake, which is an awesome, awesome chain of stores. But the one in Shibuya is one that I really like. And Mandarake has a large... Like, they carry everything for comics. They, they've got American comics, to a degree. And they have lots of um, 
back issues and lots of toys and stuff like that. Lots and lots of, of stuff. Just anything you can think of. If you want to find an old issue of Weekly Shonen Jump, that's the place that has it. Or the original issues of Akira or something. They also have a massive section of what's called Dojushin. And that basically is self-published comics. Uh, but things are a little different over there in Europe. Europe. Uh, Japan. They have very lax laws on protecting intellectual property from for, from self-published comics specifically. So basically, if you want to do a comic book about Ninja Turtles, there's very little chance of a lawsuit being able to successfully come to fruition to stop you from making that. The rationale is this. People making these comics aren't making that much money and they feel like so they're not infringing that much on the intellectual property we have a very different view of that here in america and honestly most of europe uh it's not just porn no um that would be more like yaoi so they allow a lot of this and um it's printed in pretty small numbers um it is uh and if you go to mandaraki it's not like they have like eight copies of this it's not like they have two copies of this they have one copy okay but the, but there you can look for certain existing properties and you can find people's takes on it that said a lot of the stuff there is actually sort of light porn using these existing characters so it's pretty weird and this is all about like uh leonardo and donatello it's an anthology of them sort of like like flirting with each other even though they're brothers so that's a little weird um could i actually read this not very well i i i used like a phone app to translate a lot of this stuff i, w I wasn't quite getting it um and this is made by several different uh, uh teams but there's a, like a lot of different um stuff like and it there, this is sort of the um, table of contents here and it'll sort of tell you what style of turtle it's focused on or actually maybe that's maybe it actually doesn't correlate maybe i'm just guessing there but they tell versions of like turtles based on like the live action movies uh the nickelodeon cartoon uh the comics etc and all i can say is the artwork was consistently quite good and that's another reason why japan allows this dojushin is they sort of figure that that's like a um, like a minor league. You get it? Like, this is where people can come up. And if you don't discourage that, you might find a good artist of tomorrow. So they allow this. It's pretty weird stuff. Uh, not all of it's like... Like, this isn't a porny one. But it is weird, like, having, like, uh, Leonardo and Donatello, like, flirt so much and stuff like that. I don't get it. I just wanted to get something to very unique, you know, and, and I found it. I love the Ninja Turtles, so that's the section I went to. And I knew this was the kind of stuff I would find. I was, but I was like, yeah, I still want to, I still want to, like, try to read it because it's, it's different. It's weird. Um, I wish I could read it better because just look at that. And, and you're like, okay, well, no matter what, it's good artwork. So you, you kind of get that. This is where the talent of tomorrow gets discovered. You, you know, this is where the, the, they're sort of going through their trial. Um, and I like that it focuses on all sorts of different versions of the turtles. Let's see. Uh, I've got a super chat here. Senior citizen Shaolin Simeons. They're the world's most senile fighting team. My own parody creation, but with the heart that the original movie had. Very cool. Uh, very cool. I can't read most of this stuff very well, even when I'm trying to use a translator app. Um, I do want to learn Japanese, um, just as part of sort of general self-improvement. So maybe someday I'll be able to read this, and, and if so, I'll explain it to you guys more. For now, I, I don't know what this is about. You, you're, you're seeing it, and you're, you can make as much sense of it as I can. Um, I assume it's okay to share this, since, uh, you know, it's Dojushin. I don't, I don't know who could, like, enforce copyrights on it. It, there's not much to say other than it was a weird read. It was a weird read. Um, I like discovering the art, but I couldn't make much sense of it. So it's not like I recommend this or anything. It's just more talking about 
it's fun sometimes to go to Mandarake and find weird books like this. The last thing I read this week was uh, Bowie. It was a project by Mike Allred, uh, who you know from like Mad Men, Ecstatics, um, Silver Surfer, all sorts of great books. And uh, he co-wrote this with a guy named Steve Horton. And of course, uh, Mike's wife Allred, uh, Mike, Mike's wife, Laura Allred, his frequent uh, partner uh, in comics, colored it. And this is a literal biography. Now, I'm a huge fan of Mike Allred, but I'm a huger fan. That's, that's good uh, wordplay. I'm a big fan of David Bowie. I am. And this book uh, has a lot going for it. It's got a couple things that, like, you know, I don't love, and I'll get to that. But first, what I did like was it um, it goes into a big... It goes it goes deep. It goes deep with its research. Um, lots of side people that David Bowie had met and stuff and told me little uh, bits. I didn't know much about David Bowie's older half-brother. I just didn't know about that. But he had an older half-brother. I didn't know about him being friends with certain producers and um, musicians. I knew about like his relationships and what he um, put out and stuff like that. But I didn't know everything. Um, I'm trying to find um, a certain thing here. And it takes it chronologically through his life. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, so I knew that like David Bowie was a big fan of Lou Reed. I knew that. I, I knew he was a fan of Velvet Underground and, and, and Lou Reed. I never knew that they met and that David Bowie, yeah, here, produced Perfect Day. But he did. David Bowie produced the song Perfect Day by Lou Reed, uh, along with... Um, his guitarist and musical arranger, Mick Ronson. Uh, maybe this is too much of a deep dive for some people, but I found it fascinating. It's a, it's a really interesting look at somebody's life who um, seems to have just been a, a really nice person, you know? Like, he got along with people and did not create enemies. Um, but to get to that level of success was not easy. Uh, it took a lot of hard work. And... Um, and, you know, David Bowie was... The cool thing about him was he was a nerd. He really was. He loved sci-fi. He loved... You know, he helped create glam rock because he liked stuff like Iggy Pop and the Stooges and Alice Cooper and stuff like that. And so he... And, and he had studied, like, um, mime and Commedia dell'arte. It's amazing. This is a great book. Um, I like Mike Allred's art. And I would say that it actually gets better about two-thirds of the way through. Like, some of this early stuff feels a little too referenced to me. Um, he's con... Like, somewhere around here is actually where I noticed that, like, he, Mike Allred started, like, um, varying up the poses a little better. Before that, we've got so many pages where David Bowie's face is cheated towards the camera, no matter, like, who he's talking to and where. Like, people aren't always facing each other. When people talk, they tend to face each other. But he must have been using a lot of reference, I think, for some of these images. So, like, instead, we've constantly got, like, people facing the camera, facing us, and having conversations. So that's... It becomes a little awkward in that first... Not even third, but, like, first, like, you know, 20% of the story. It's, it's a little too referenced for my tastes. Um, yeah, I've seen the Bowie movie, The Man Who Fell to Earth. It's really good. It's re he, he was a good actor. He legit was. Um, you know, he was in a lot of good stuff. I liked him in that movie, um, The Prestige. That was one of his uh, more recent uh, movies that he made. Um, so, I, I don't know. Um, oh, look at this. Uh, Seth Cafferlin sends in a super chat. Keep up the great content. Hang in there. I'm doing my best, man. I'm doing my best to stay safe. Eventually, it gets to a point where, like, you know, Bowie is talking to his creations. We're sort of getting into his head, and, and then it becomes um, very interesting. But it, it, it all goes through his life. There's there's plenty of details that I did not know about, so, and I'm a big Bowie fan, and there was little things that I didn't know about, so I found that interesting. Even if you're not a fan of the music, I really think that this is an interesting biography. He led an interesting life. I mean, you don't get to... Um, you don't get to that level of success without hard work. And this sort of goes into the hard work and the people that he met and, and how he moved uh, through his life. 
it's it's cool, man. It's a really cool book. Um, definitely a strong recommend. But keep in mind, I'm biased. I'm a David Bowie fan. This book was made for me. The fact that it's by an artist that I really like, Mike Allred, was icing on the cake. Because I probably would have gotten almost any big comic book uh, that was a um, history. But it's a good one. It's thick, too. It, it, it's big. It's big. Um, yeah, I remember when Kiss had a comic book. Marvel published it. And the story goes that each of Kiss um, pricked their finger and put a drop of blood into the ink that was printed in that comic so that they could say that their blood was in the comic. Uh, ridiculous. I don't know if they really did it or not. And that was everything um, that I read this week. Yeah. Uh, actually, there was a little bit of stuff that I haven't like finished yet that I've been reading. Um, specifically, um, I've been reading some of Berserk. I'm trying to, trying to... Well, here, actually, I've got the comics that I have to read to the side. So I'll also talk briefly about like what I've got on my plate to read. So one thing I'm trying to do is support my local comic stores and find... Oh, I'd love a Daft Punk uh, issue. But I'm trying to talk to my uh, stores and find comics that I haven't read before that people are either talking about or strongly recommend or maybe I, I would be interested in that I just haven't gotten to yet. So... Um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm buying comics that I haven't read before. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, this is one that I found. A manga version of Transformers. Um, Transformers are, are an interesting story. Like, uh, you know, the, their toy line here in America d did not last as long as G.I. Joe's, for instance. Because G.I. Joe went from 82 to... Wait, 84 to 92. 84 to 92. But... Um, Transformer? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that wrong. G.I. Joe lasted from 1982 to 1994. Transformers only lasted from like 1984 to 1990. They're original waves. I know that they still exist as properties that have like released other things. Um, but Transformers got really popular really fast and, and maybe burned out fast too. The cartoon was quite popular. And after, um, after the American cartoon ended you know they had a movie and then they did like about three to four more episodes no 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 i'm sorry they did a whole season then they did like three or four more episodes okay anyway over in japan the cartoon continued that continuity um they had a season called headmasters they had a season called um Super God Master Force, and then they had a season called Victory. And uh, I actually reviewed every single episode of each of those cartoons on the website therobotspajamas.com. They're pretty ridiculous. Like, the translation's kind of weird and stuff, but it's the same continuity. So if you, like, grew up liking the cartoon continuity, there's more seasons. Now, they don't share many of the same characters, but it is still the same continuity. Things move forward. Beyond that, using that same continuity, even after those cartoons ended, they kept doing story pages in magazines and comic books set in that continuity. So this comic is a recent um, translation, but it's from that stuff back in like the um, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and I was just like, you know... I was a big fan of Transformers when I was a little kid, so I thought this is like nostalgic and stuff, and I want to, I want to get into it and read it. So, it looks like it's pretty good art. Um, drawing Transformers can't be easy. I haven't really tried more than like just like a pinup or something, but it's got to be hard because if you're drawing, um, if you're drawing people, we've all got proportions for the most part, you know. But Transformers all have different proportions. Uh, you know, like, height-wise, maybe about the same. Head head about the same. But then, like, shoulders and length of arms or length of legs all over the place. So it's really hard. Like, you know, you can't break it down the same way. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking forward to that just for nostalgia's sake. So that that's fun. Um, I told you last week that I uh, read the first trade of Ice Cream Man. I went ahead and picked up the second trade because it was something I enjoyed. So I'm looking forward to uh, to reading that. 
Oh, this is just like, I guess, from the Berserk uh, comic. Um, I still need to catch up on Sean Murphy's Batman Curse of the White Knight. Let's see, I've got issues... This is all out of order. I see five, six, seven, eight, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I've got like a lot. I've got I've got like five issues of that to read. I'll probably blast through that. And then I've got a uh, Berserk here. Sorry, this should actually be flipped over like this. So, and this is only my understanding. Even though this is a nice big thick uh, volume, I think this is only collects the first three Tonkabon volumes. So maybe like, you know, a hundred chapters or something. And this comic started back in the late 80s and is still going today. That said, there have been some pretty big breaks. This uh, guy, uh, Kentaro Mura, does take extended hiatuses. But, like, not more than a year or anything like that. Like, just under a year he might take a hiatus here and there. But he keeps it going. Um, so there's a lot to catch up on this before I can give um, a good opinion on it, you know. There's a lot to go through there. But so I'm, I'm excited. I've still got a bunch of comics to read. Um, and I'm trying to think of new things to ask for at the comic book stores that I shop at. One of them last night had something called a live claim. What that was was the store. It's called Atomic Comics. It's uh, based in... Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, they um, they have a live stream of a show. They'll show a comic, like, and describe what it's about, why it's important. They go through back issues and stuff, and then they reveal the price on it, which is always discounted from like you know where it normally would be, and then the first person in the live chat to say claim the name of the title, and the price that they've set. You have to say all three things and get them right. The first person to do that gets to buy it at that discounted price. It's kind of fun. It's a little bit like an auction, except you're not bidding against each other. You're just like waiting to see something cool. And um, last night I, I did successfully get one thing. I got uh, the Batman number one from the New 52 by um, Snyder and Capullo. So that was good. And that was mostly just to support the store. It's not like I need that comic. It was just like, yeah. So anyway, um, I got that last night. And I'm trying to support my local comic shops. Am I ever going to cover Joe Kubert? No question. I'll definitely get to that. Like, there's so many big names in comics. I, I'm, I'm grateful and glad because I can't just burn through everybody. Uh, let's see. Somebody says they read Frank Cho's Liberty Meadows Volume 1. Um, I never found, like, Liberty Me Meadows necessarily, like, knee slapper, ha-ha, funny, but the art is gorgeous. So, um, I like it. I like Liberty Meadows. I've I read all of that. Uh, let's see. Um, neutral about Comics Gate? No, I'm not really neutral. I, 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 I'm, I don't support it at all. I, I don't, I just don't want to talk about it. I don't, there's an open comic shop in your area um my comic shops are not open for customers you get it they're like um they, they offer curbside pickup online ordering uh, live streams so that's how i'm trying to um, support them um through this tough time okay so people are having um debates in the chat room i don't have uh much interest in getting into it folks um do i have another youtube channel yeah it's called pros and cons um i'll uh go back and edit this video's description later and, and put a link to that in there um it it doesn't have that many subscribers or, or, or anything i just uh if i feel like doing um some drawing i'll usually live stream it uh there <sighs> crowdfunding i don't Crowdfunding is a good way to get your foot in the door to prove that you can make something. I don't really see it as um, a very successful route to building a big audience. I really don't. I, I, I think it's a good way to start. I, do, I think it's a good way to, to release a passion project. I, I, I admire people's ability to get something done. I do. But there's so many of them that do fa fail, you know, that like don't get fulfilled there are and there's just like um also you know like you can't really flip through it to see the quality 
you can't like read a review ahead of time. So I don't know. In I, I'm talking almost in general about not just comics there, but crowdfunding in general. I have supported certain like gizmos and and uh, movies, but I don't I don't really like the idea of me taking on the risk instead of like somebody else. I think if you're passionate about something, you should self-publish it and get it distributed into stores. I think that that shows a lot more confidence in your work than like sort of putting the risk on your audience. I'm not against crowdfunding. I just don't support it as much as I do the people that take the time to self-publish. Um, because you can do that without losing money too. Um, yeah, somebody says it's a crapshoot. I sort of agree. Uh, you can't count on it working. Um, it's, it's risky, and it's putting the risk on the people that financially support it, um, you know? Uh, you don't know how much work somebody's done on it. Like I say, I'm not against it. It's just not my favorite uh, outlet. What's my favorite Star Wars comics? Oh, you know what I liked um, was in the 90s when all of a sudden Star Wars, new Star Wars material started getting made. They did, um, Dark Horse had the license and they did a Dark Empire, I think it was called, where like the, the Emperor was cloned and uh, Luke, to get close to him, agrees to become his apprentice. And uh, that was really cool. Comicsgate is standing up against creators inserting identity politics. I don't agree with that at all. I, I reject that premise. Um, I think that uh, politics have been in comics since day one. And if you don't like it, you don't have to get it. But I don't, I don't see how it's like forcing anybody. Like nobody is forced to buy a comic. For it was hard to get these comics because of the the, the world we're in right now. Right? It's hard to get comics. Um, so. Um, Anyway, uh, let's see. What else is being asked? Because I'm about to like wrap the chat up. It's been almost an hour. Let's see. I'm a growing artist, and due to quarantine, I've been learning ways to improve my art. Do you have any tips to improve my art? Life drawing and, and drawing, just putting the hours in. The only way to get good is just to put the hours in. Um, to, 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 you know, the, the, the people in my life that have been successful are those that have been tenacious. And I know some really successful people. Um, Robert Kirkman, he's pretty successful, right? Uh, actor Ken Jeong, uh, Rick Remender, a bunch of other people. Uh, these are people that I know, and the one thing that they all share is um, tenacity and not taking no for an answer. So if you want to be a good artist, uh, I would just say that the, the single thing, the single thing you can do to, to help yourself is put in the hours. Just just draw as much as you can every day. Because you're going to have some bad drawings in you no matter what. And um, uh, it takes a lot of hours to get those out of you, to work it out, to work out the kinks. Beyond that, you're going to start getting good at certain things. Maybe you'll get good at drawing faces or, you know, buildings. Once you're good at something, now it's time to challenge yourself and focus on those things that you're not good at. Are you not good at lighting? Are you not good at gesture? Are you not good at uh, vehicles? Well, now it's time to focus on those things that you don't enjoy drawing because you need to be well-rounded as an artist. So you can't just sort of like just draw superheroes all day. You know, you need to like say like, well, how do I draw a guy that is um, pudgy? Or how do I draw an old person? How do I draw a six-year-old? Drawing kids is hard. So anyway, um, those are some of the tips in general. And at the end of the day, keep in mind, I, I, I'm a published artist, but I'm not really a professional artist. So, you know, take all of my advice with a grain of salt, right? Um, am I in an Eisner-nominated comic as an artist? Yes. Yes, I am. And I'll always be proud of that. But, um, you know. I'm not somebody working at, like, you know, Dark Horse or Image or something like that. Will I be buying Gotham High or the new Warriors series? Um, probably not, but as you can see from, like, what I've been showing you, I don't read a lot of monthly comics. So, who knows? If it gets a lot of, like, attention or, you know, really strong reviews that are either really good or really bad, that's the kind of stuff that crosses 
uh, my eyes and becomes potential fodder for a show. So anything that gets a lot of attention is something that, that, that I will potentially read. I was a professional superhero. Yeah, technically. Technically, I was. What's your Eisner-nominated comic? Uh, it's called uh, Trickster. It was an anthology. I told you I like anthologies. It was an anthology all written by um, actual Native Americans, and they could choose an artist to illustrate their uh, book. Have I ever read Manifest Destiny? Absolutely I've read Manifest Destiny. Actually, I proofread all the comics through um, Kirkman's imprint, uh, and that includes Manifest Destiny, so I've been proofreading that since day one. But it's uh, illustrated by a very good friend of mine, Matthew Roberts. Uh, Matt is somebody that I've known for like over 20 years, um, and I love seeing his... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of glare there, so here, I'll prop this up. Um... Matt Roberts is a great, great guy and a talented artist. He's somebody that, like, his art has evolved. Oh, he's so talented. Great premise. If you haven't read it, Manifest Destiny follows Lewis and Clark on their expedition across America. But it uh, adds the wrinkle that supposedly they're not just mapping America. They're making it safe for people to settle because there's all sorts of supernatural creatures that originally inhabited uh, North America great premise great premise um but yeah like i proofread that um i'm very good friends with matt love that book love it love it i'm biased but i love it uh let's see is there anywhere you can learn about doing good comic panel layouts and speech bubbles well those are two different things you know like uh whether you're talking about like you know penciling art or layouts uh, even simpler or lettering um i guess one thing you could start with is uh understanding comics by scott mcleod um and you can read stuff by like uh wally wood and alex toth they did a lot of great stuff in terms of uh sequential storytelling what's your opinion on current shazam com comic series uh, i appreciate the super chat but i don't have an opinion i i have not read that i i'm not plugged in on that one um i don't know even what the creative team is on that unfortunately uh, let's see. Opinion on Robinson Starman. Well, here, here I do have an opinion. Let's see. I wish uh, someone would talk about that uh, book series one day. Great love letter to the Golden Age. Yeah, yeah. Um, James Robinson Starman is pretty dope. Um, that's definitely something I would consider uh, reviewing at some point. Uh, so, uh, it's a good book. That's all I can say for now. Um, I haven't read it recently, so I, so nothing's like fresh in my mind. But I. I liked it, and um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a, a good book. Um, I liked, uh, yeah, the modern Starman. I liked him. Hi from New Zealand. Oh, hello. Um, my grandfather was born in New Zealand. I'm 25% Kiwi. I, I can't wait to visit. You know what? I was going to visit um, New Zealand in like um, March or something of ne maybe February, February or March of 2021, and my um, my flight got canceled. My flight got canceled because of everything that's going on. They just canceled that one and didn't, like, offer me um, a new flight. They just refunded it. And what's frustrating is I got in at an amazing price. It was, like, $500 round trip. I hope I can visit it again someday. Let's say um, you love Batman Year 100. Was Batman Year 100, try to re help me refresh my memory, was that by Paul Pope? If so, I think I read that one. It was a while back now. Um, I got to meet Paul Pope once at a Small Press Expo. That was the name of the comic convention, SPX, Small Press Expo. Had a really good conversation with him. Um, he's a really smart guy. Uh, yeah, I did see the YouTube video, The Fall of Phoenix Jones, because they were using some of my artwork in their thumbnail without asking me. But if you look at it now, you'll see that it's uh, credited to me. I did that artwork. So yeah, I did see it. It's uh, sad news, but I'm not surprised. Uh, hello from the Philippines. That's awesome. Hoping travel is an option later this year. Yeah, I know. Like, right now, I'd, I wouldn't even want to travel, personally. But uh, as soon as it's relatively safe to do, I definitely... I'm, I'm, I love traveling the world, and uh, the next place I was hoping to go was New Zealand and uh, Sydney, Australia. So, hopefully I can still do that sometime soon. Your art looks better than Rob Liefeld. Well, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> Liefeld sold millions of comics. Uh, I haven't done that. But I, I was in a book that got an Eisner nom, and I'm proud of that. 
So I think I'm going to wrap it up, folks. Um, I had a great time chatting with everybody. Um, the virus isn't fun to have. San Sanity, are you sick? Or do you know somebody that is? I hope not. San Sanity has been a follower uh, for, for years. Any chance you would speak on Epic Magazine? Um, potentially. Potentially. Um, I talked about it uh, in some detail in a recent episode. What, what was it? Jim Shooter. Jim Shooter. I talked a little bit about the Epic imprint. He didn't start Epic Magazine, but he did start the Epic imprint. Uh, great work on the Kriegstein episode. Your EC coverage is always good. I love DC. Kind of like brief, all things considered, how long they were out there, but they inspired a lot. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to wrap up. Um, you guys are all awesome. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate the, the super chats. That was really, really kind of you. Um, and it helps. Uh, but anyway, um, I will try to keep doing these as long as like the views are somewhat reasonable. I'll just sort of talk about what I've read this week and take some questions from you all. I'm trying to just give extra content during this time when it's not... Um, there's not tons to do, is there? But um, out of what I read this past week, let me just uh, do one quick summary thing here. What would I recommend the most strongly out of all these books? Um, I would say two things. Bowie gets my overall recommendation for the best thing that I read this week. Um, but I uh, am also biased, so I know that it might not be everybody's cup of tea. But the artwork is gorgeous. It's a fascinating story. There's lots of extra details that I don't think you get anywhere else. And then the second thing that I liked the most was actually Basketful of Heads. Even though I'm enjoying, like, Immortal Hulk and X-Men as ongoings, Basketful of Heads was totally binge-worthy. Just, just a, a super fast-paced uh, story once you get to know the characters. And they're interesting, and you're really rooting for the main girl. Um, I would love to see this adapted, but no matter what, I like it more as a comic book. Um, so anyway, uh, those, are, those are the two things that I recommend most that I've read this week. Uh, feel free in the comments below to list what you think I should read. Because um, I'm looking for new ideas. Um, I, I want to support my comic shops. If there's something that you think I should read, let me know. I'll see if my comic store has it. So trades definitely help because they have a lot more of those than back issues. But um, give me a suggestion. I'll try to uh, read it. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm going to take off now, folks. Um, until next time, I want you to keep reading comics. Take care. Stay safe. I love you all. I really do.